Hey guys, so like I said, I'm gonna be showing you how to build your own fully collapsible VTAC barrier on a budget. So you're gonna be spending around $75 and it can fit into a small vehicle, whether that be the back seat or the trunk, if a truck is not available. All right, let's do it. All right guys, so the first part we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about the right side as you're looking at the barrier going down range. All right, that brace, the way I made it, the foot of the brace is gonna be 48 inches long. So you're gonna cut that at 48 inches. I mounted the stand, which is the part that sits against the barrier, at 20 inches coming from the downrange side. All right, so you're gonna have a longer piece of your foot facing towards you, and the 20 inch section is actually gonna face downrange. The leg itself is gonna be 24 inches long, and the angled brace is cut at 45 degrees on both sides. Make sure you're cutting the correct 45 degrees. Uh, you don't want opposite 45s because you won't be able to mount it on the leg and the foot. And I cut that just, the only way, the only reason I measured that, or the only way I measured that was I just cut an inch off my leg itself. Um, so the leg is 24 inches. The angled brace, I just measured and cut 23 inch piece of wood. And then uh, 45 both sides. Let's take a look at the actual leg itself, all right? So here is the leg, and right, we're going to see it more whenever we start building it. Let's go on to the next one. Alright guys, so let's talk about the long brace. The long brace, if you're looking at your barrier, is going to be on the left side or the long side of your barrier. The way I cut that is pretty similar to the other one. There's only a, a small difference, which I'll explain in a second. That is the fact that we have a bracket on the, uh, the long leg of that brace. So our foot is also 48 inches long. We're also mounting that leg at, four, uh, at uh, 20 inches. So we're also gonna have a long side towards us and a short side down range. Our brace is going to be 28 inches because the leg where we cut is gonna be 29 inches. And the top part of that leg is gonna be 43 inches equaling out to 72 inches, which is six feet, which is the height of the brace it's, or the barrier itself. So, like I said, there is a bracket to allow this piece to fold down and sit here. So it actually shortens it by over three feet. So let's take a look at that real quick. All right, guys. So here is that leg that we were just talking about, the long side. It is six feet tall. Like I said, we got a 48-inch foot. And there is our bracket. All right, the way the bracket works is I just cut the, the long leg, which is the six-foot tall leg. I cut it at... Uh, the measurements I gave you earlier. That way it can fold down and sit as such. So it looks like a triangle and it's significantly shorter than having that leg all the way up. So you can fold it down and sit there and transport it. It sits almost even with your other leg. Almost. It's a little bit taller. All right, so that's what it looks like. And whenever you want to put it up and mount it, you can easily just sit it up and then mount your barrier. All right, let's talk about the barriers. All right, so now we've talked about both the braces. Now we want to talk about the fun part, which is actually the VTAC barrier itself. So I'm actually going to move you guys closer so you can take a screenshot of that. All right, now that you got a screenshot, I'm going to explain kind of what all these measurements are. That way, whenever you're looking at it, if you get confused, you can always come back to the video and uh, kind of get my explanation on it, all right? So our ply, board, our ply board itself is six feet tall by uh, four feet wide, all right? It's originally a four by eight pl piece of plywood, but this barrier itself is gonna be six feet tall by four feet wide, and the short side is actually gonna be 24 inches or two, uh, two feet. All right, so start, start from the, the angles. All right, so each cut is a different uh, inches, is different in inches. So we start off, we got a 12 inch cut here, 12, 6, 6, 6, 12, 6, 6, 6, 12, and 12. All right, cutting it that way is gonna give you actually two barriers out of this one single sheet of plywood. All right, so the piece that's up here that you can't see is actually another barrier that you can use whenever this one shits the bed or uh, if you want to make two barriers. All right, so let's talk about our 
portholes for what we're going to be shooting through and where I place those and the sizes of those. All right, so we're going to start at the top. We got an angled rectangle that's actually going to be a two by eight rectangle, two inches by eight inches. The top right corner, as you can see there, the top right corner is going to be flush with the corner here. It's going to be 12 inches from the top and six inches from that corner. So you can put that dot there and then measure two inches, eight, and uh, angle it however you want. The second port is a six by six box. It's going to be 12 inches from the left side of the long side and then 12 inches from the same corner from the top. So you'll make that little dot in your top left corner of that box and you'll measure six inches all the way around and that's your first square. Our second square is actually going to be right here. So this one's actually pretty easy because if you notice there's a big black line that goes all the way through that I marked a cut line at three feet. So you're actually going to mark that three feet from the top all the way across. That's going to be level with this six inch, six inch section here. It's also going to be level with the point of this rectangle and the top of this square. That is where we're going to cut the plywood and we're actually going to put two hinges there and I'll show you where in a second. But that is again three feet from the top. We're going to mark a single line all the way across and so we're going to cut the plywood in half. So this box is six inches from the left and you just make a six by six box. The next rectangle is going to be from this point here, six inches down, from this point here, six inches left. You'll make your dot and you'll measure two inches down to the right and then make your two by seven box. So this box is going to be two by seven. This one, remember, was two by eight. Our next rectangle is going to be right below those. It's at this top left corner of that rectangle is going to be eight inches from the left and then 18 inches from this corner right here. So measure from that corner over 18 inches and that's your next dot. So you'll have a dot there and a dot there. That should be 10 inches. So you'll draw a two by 10 box. All right, so we got a two by eight box, two by seven box, two by 10 box. Our next rectangle is this one right here. So this one is gonna be a two by eight box again. This one, this right top right corner is going to be six inches from that corner right there on your first 12 inch cut. So six inches down, 12 inches from the short side. You'll make a dot and do your two by eight box or your two by eight rectangle. So that's all the ports on the inside of the barrier. On the bottom of the barrier, you're going to measure seven and a half inches from the left side, the bottom of the barrier. Make a line and you're going to make a nine by nine box. So whenever you cut this out, it should be nine by nine inches by nine inches all the way around. You're going to go over five inches and you're going to make a five by five box. So the same thing you did here. Now you're measuring five inches by five inches. You're going to measure over 3.5 inches, make a line, come to the short side, measure six inches, make a line. And again, this drawing is not to scale. But the top of this triangle, the very point of this triangle, is actually 17 inches from that same dot that we used earlier, from that same corner we used earlier on our first 12 inch cut. So you'll measure from that corner down 17 inches and make a, a little dot, and that is your top of your triangle. To make sure, measure from the right side to the top of your triangle, and it should be 12 inches, which I've written down right there. So then you'll cut out your triangle. All right. That is pretty much everything on the barrier. The only thing I didn't mention is the brackets. So on mine, I actually have the brackets mounted right here and right here in between the square and the rectangle. I don't have anything over here. Again, in between the square and the rectangle and in between the square and the six foot side of that barrier. So let's take a look at this barrier and how it actually works. All right, so as you can see, we got our full barrier standing up right there with all our ports and all our cutouts. Whenever we want to put it away, we just come over here. As you see, we got brackets on both those spots between the rectangle and square and in between the, the left side and the square. Whenever we're done, we take it off. We just take this, fold it down, and now we have a collapsible barrier. Whenever we want to use it, same thing. We just pull it up, 
Don't let it fall. And it'll sit by itself. All right, so let's move on to the next part. All right, guys, so here is the finished product after it is all said and done. That looks pretty darn good to me. It's the front. Go around the back. Don't mind the baby. <laughs> Again, this is very simple to put together. Put it together in about half a day by myself. Very minimal hardware required. You notice there is bolts on both sides. All right, you're gonna need at least six, fifth, six, five sixteenths by two inch hex bolts. All right, I only use six. I went two in the bottom, two in the short side, and I put two in the top. I did make an extra hole right here, if you can see it. That is not a bullet hole. That is a pre-drilled hole for an extra 5 16 by 2 inch hex bolt if I needed it, which it turns out I did not need it. On the other side, all I used was little wing nuts. All right, you notice there is a washer on that side and a washer on this side. It's not needed, but it helps and it does look better. You're going to need three brackets. Again, two for the barrier itself and then one for your long leg. And you're going to need a small box of uh, I believe three inch nails uh, to drill into your two by fours and depending on what size plywood you use I ended up going the cheap route because again this is for budget that is a 7 16 inch OSB board for $30 if I wanted a regular three quarter inch plywood I'm looking between 50 and 90 dollars since I went smaller on the plywood my hinges these screws are actually shorter screws. I just kind of played games and went and got uh, short screws until I figured out what was short enough to hold the hinges and still not go through the plywood so I didn't stab myself when I was trying to put it together. We only needed one sheet of 7 16 inch OSB board, 4x8, and we only used three 2x8 foot 2x4s. All right, you've already got all the dimensions of all the 2x4s and how to cut them. And that is a fully collapsible VTAC barrier. I hope this helps some of you guys. I know a lot of questions have been asked. I asked them previously um, how you build a collapsible VTAC barrier. Nobody seemed to really have an answer on it or they just kind of posted a picture and it didn't really help me any. Um, so I took it upon myself to go ahead and create my own and hopefully be able to post it and help many of you that had the same kind of questions in the TAC Games community. Um, if you have any questions about this, uh, feel free to ask. I'm an open book. I'm willing to help anybody that has the uh, courage to ask the question to begin with. Um, I did forget to mention a couple tools I used. You don't need them, but I used them to help me actually put it up uh, more efficiently if I'm by myself. Uh, I just used a little set of pliers to hold the hex bolts as I spun the wing nuts on and I also have a little C-clamp which I just clamped to the top here that held the board up in place while I put everything together. The um, issue, the only issue I could see people having is because it is hinged it does lean a little bit forward um, but I put a lot of pressure onto the front of it and it does not budge. All right, as long as you're putting forward pressure as you're shooting, then everything's fine. All right, all it does is just lean a little bit forward, but there's not a whole lot of give even with those hinges. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Hopefully, this helps some of you. Um, and uh, that pretty much covers it. Hope you all like it.